around the moon. Uh, it did go 11 days. I think it, uh, to this day it's probably the uh, most ambitious uh, first flight uh, of any new spacecraft, and it came through with flying colors. If Shira harbored fears that the project would be canceled, he helped dispel them with the crew's efforts and with the pronouncement that Apollo 7 was a first-class space mobile. Tests included eight burns of the propulsion system. All were perfect, textbook operations. A distinctive feature introduced during Apollo 7 was live telecasts from space. These broadcasts would become important to Americans during the missions that followed. The crew received a special Emmy Award for their first practical television transmissions from space. Roger, good morning to everyone in television land. You're looking at the right-hand portion of the main display console. In the upper left-hand portion of your view, you would see the uh, instrument that has to do with the cryogenics that are used to power the fuel cells and provide breathing oxygen to the spacecraft. Originally, Apollo 8 was to be a second Earth orbit test using a new Saturn series rocket, the 36-story tall Saturn V. Its three stages had almost five and a half times the thrust of Apollo 7's rocket, and the liftoff subjected the astronauts to increased stress and vibration. You have these giant engines down there gimbling, a million and a half pounds of thrust, flicking themselves back and forth like a sort of a garden hose you're riding up uh, into space. Uh, we're at the end of a 360-foot uh, vehicle. Think of it not as a big, rigid hunk like the Washington Monument, but more like a whip antenna on an automobile. So at the top, we were really being thrown around. And uh, basically, during the first 10 or 15 seconds, uh, we could not speak to each other, and we couldn't hit a switch on the instrument panel if we had to because of the motion. Given the success of the previous flight, and the fact that U.S. military intelligence had heard rumors that the Russians were ready to go to the moon, NASA decided to proceed with a lunar orbit. Apollo 8 journeyed to within 60 miles of the moon's surface and circled it 10 times. Anders, Jim Lovell, and mission commander Frank Borman became the first humans to see the moon firsthand and to view the entire Earth from space. Although the Soviets had fired several unmanned probes at the moon, and had even landed one on the surface, they were nowhere near sending human beings. Apollo 8 entered orbit three days out on Christmas Eve, 1968. That night, as a greeting to Earth from more than 220,000 miles away, the crew took turns reading the creation story from the book of Genesis. First Anders, then Lovell, then Borman. A billion people in 64 countries tuned in radios and television sets. We were told about six weeks before the flight that we would have a television performance on Christmas Eve which would have the largest audience that had ever listened to a human voice and the only instructions that our government gave us at this time was to do something appropriate and frankly uh, it was an annoyance to me I don't know how it was to Bill but we weren't really excited about uh, doing something appropriate we, we asked uh, some friends what they might suggest and a friend of ours named Cy Borgen who was uh, a very gifted uh, individuals lives in Washington came back with a suggestion that, that it might be appropriate if we felt like it to read from Genesis and that's how it all happened uh, it was wasn't pre-planned it was I mean it was pre-planned from about three weeks before the flight but I didn't give 30 seconds thought to it it just turned out that Cy Borgen was a much more sensitive uh, intellectual than I thought he was and it, it, I think it struck the the tone for the whole mission in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters 
For the return trip, Apollo 8 had to establish a critical burn on the far side of the moon, out of radio contact. At 19 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day, Jim Lovell re-established communications with Mission Control in Houston, Texas. Please be informed there is a Santa Claus, Lovell reported. Apollo 8 began a safe and successful voyage home. Apollo 8 was what the spirit of Apollo was all about. Apollo program primarily was intended to demonstrate that uh, man could leave the planet Earth. And Apollo 8 was the first craft to do that in all history. And uh, the job that uh, Jim and his colleagues, Frank Warman and Bill Anders, did on that flight was, I think, one of the major high points of all the history of flight. At first glance, Apollo 9 may have seemed a regression, returning to an Earth orbit mission after an impressive flight around the moon. The goal of this flight was to test the lunar excursion module, or LEM, and make sure all the components of the Apollo craft worked in harmony. Also important was an EVA, the first for Apollo. Leading the mission was Jim McDivitt, who had overseen the development and construction of the LEM. David Scott piloted the command module, and lunar module pilot Russell Swikert performed double duty as a spacewalker. For the first time, the command and lunar modules received names from their crew. The command module was christened Gumdrop, the LEM Spider. The one I flew, Apollo uh, 9, was called the D-Mission. It was the first flight of the lunar module. Uh, it was an Earth orbit mission like uh, Waltz. Um, we checked out all the things in the lunar module. Uh, it was a lot of fun. The lunar module is uh, a very flimsy spacecraft, unlike all the models which show it to be very tough looking. Uh, it's really made out of cellophane and scotch tape and, and uh, I'm not exaggerating. And, and uh, the material in the lunar module is so thin that if um, on the Earth, if you drop something like a screwdriver or something, go right through the floor. The other objective of Apollo 9 was a spacewalk, complete with a test of the lunar spacesuit and backpack. Although Schweikert experienced a touch of motion sickness prior to the EVA, the trial run went on without a hitch. Okay, James, come on out. Okay. Come on, let the camera run here. Taking pictures of everybody taking pictures. Yeah, you want to retrieve the sample? Uh, right, that's a good idea. The progression of Apollo flights continued with 10, a lunar orbit and rendezvous of Charlie Brown and its lunar module, Snoopy. Crew members Tom Stafford, John Young, and Gene Cernan scouted the moon's sea of tranquility, the region where Apollo 11 was scheduled to land. They also transmitted the first live color pictures back to Earth. Apollo 8 had not carried a lunar module. Apollo 10 could land, but didn't. The LEM containing Cernan and Stafford came within nine miles of the surface. The inevitable question, people say, didn't you want to keep going and didn't you want to land? Well, we knew long before we left that our mission was not to land, and just to make sure we understood that, they uh, only half fueled the ascent tanks. <laughs> so. We did. We made a low pass. We found out we had a, a little miscommunications between the radar and the computer. That might very well have stopped uh, Apollo 11 from landing had it not been found out. And, and we found a few other things. We, we actually separated or staged the vehicles. And uh, when we lift off the surface, you use a descent stage that contains the descent engine as a launch platform. And if you've seen pictures, it just stays on the surface. But well, we did.